there are very few times when i complete reading a book when i finish a book and i have to film a video asap because that's how excited that book made me feel this book is easily a 10 on 10 from me this might be the best book i have read this year that's why i'm filming it right here in front of you i just wanted to share this video as soon as i can or uh, if there's just one non fiction book that you can read this year let this book be that book the book is called an immense world by ed yong the book is basically how animal senses reveal the hidden realms around us very very unique book this book will make you realize about how humans are just perceiving a slice of reality humans feel that they have conquered everything they know everything there's so much scientific research and everything but when we study animals when we study how animals interact with the environment you would be mind blown and it will be very very humbling as to how humans exist a uh, very interesting stories i'm going to share whatever stories are there in this book i'm going to share why you should read this book i'm going to share what my experience was and why i think it's one of the best reads of this year uh, this video video is going to be very very interesting so make sure you watch the video till the end you may never know which thought or fact may resonate with you and change the course of your life so let's get started okay so let's talk about the book let's talk about how animal senses reveal the hidden realms around us the book is basically talking about one simple concept it says that all organisms all human beings all species have a sensory bubble around them it's called olvet in some different language this sensory bubble exactly describes what to what level you can experience reality let's start with the story uh, from the book in that book there is a research scientist and his assistant both of them decide to go to a panama rainforest they are basically studying a specific type of insects these insects are called tree tops when both of these went to that panama rainforest they found a river there and when they crossed the river near the shore of the river there was a bunch of shrubs small trees on these shrubs there was a big leaf and when the assistant removed that leaf underneath the leaf there were a lot of tree top insects there was a big insect which which presumably was the mother and there was a lot of baby insects on the whole the environment was very very silent there was no noise around these scientists knew that these insects communicate in a very very different way they don't talk they don't communicate through sensors anything they communicate through vibrations they twitch their abdominal muscles and send the vibration to the tree tops and this is how they communicate with each other these scientists had developed an equipment a sort of a headphone by which they could listen to these vibrations and surprisingly when they put on the headphones it was a harmonious sound uh, it was literally the sound of nature it was literally like the tree had a song of its own when the scientists removed the headphones it was silent again when they put on the headphones there was sound there was a harmonious instrument playing somewhat of sorts there was a harmonious instrument of sorts which was playing this basically is the crux of the book it says that humans are experiencing just a slice of reality and all these animals all these different animals have different ways by which they interact with the environment i don't think i've ever studied animals in such a way what happens is how humans study animals is how we can use animal senses to justify how humans work but if you change the lens here if you look from the lens of the animals of how animals are experiencing re reality things are very very different so basically if you just look at it objectively if you look at the side of that tree it was just a silent tree but when you put on the headphones there was an orchestra going on there was like a sound show going on so the writer has given a lot lot of examples around it he basically calls a sensory bubble around all humans called olvet which has limitations of how we can perceive reality he starts off the book by saying let's say there is a room there's an elephant in the room there's a mouse there's an owl there is a robin there's a rattlesnake there's a human there's also a small spider in the room now it's very interesting to see that how these animals perceive each other humans because we have our sight as the most dominant thing we can see everyone but did you know elephants have a very very low sight even dogs have a very low sight dogs cannot even perceive all the colors they just perceive shades of blue and yellow most of them is black and white for them the rattlesnake tries to find out the position of organisms by the smell the owl uses by its ears how it hears different positions and most of all the spider the spider has limited visibility it cannot hear it cannot sense but it senses the vibrations in its spider web that's how it perceives people around it that's how it perceives all organisms around it so basically humans just had five senses light see smell touch uh, so basically humans have just found out about of about five senses but the author says that animals have a variety of senses and they perceive things very differently some animals can experience the changing magnetic fields some animals can experience the changing electric fields some animals see ultraviolet radiations some animals hear ultraviolet radiation and even you know dogs dogs for that matter whenever you take your dog to a walk 
For us, it's just a normal walk through the city or a park. But for the dog, it's a dazzling environment of histories of smells. Dogs have a very heightened sense of smell. That's why dogs are being used to find out about bombs, to find out about drugs and all of these things. So when humans smell, they also breathe through the same vent. But dogs apparently have a different sense of smell, a different sense, a different channel of breathing than that of smelling. They have big sensory, res- they have big olfactory receptors. Humans cannot say whether this smell is a particular type of smell. Human, humans cannot quantify the amount of the stuff through which the smell is coming, but apparently dogs can. Apparently, apparently elephants can. If lions come into the human world, they would practically be considered blind, you know? That's how limited their visibility is. But they have different heightened sm- senses. This book is going to talk about all of these very, very interesting things. The best part about this book is, yes, it's a scientific book. Yes, it's a very in-depth study of the ecology around us, but everything is written in the form of a story. He has divided the book into 13 chapters. Each chapter talks about one specific sensation. One chapter will talk about light. One chapter will talk about smell. One chapter will talk about touch. He talks about how different organisms perceive things differently. Some can perceive light. Some can perceive smell. Some can perceive touch. But almost all organisms can perceive chemicals. Even a bacteria which has a which just has a single cell can perceive chemicals around it. It's it survives. It multiplies. It duplicates itself by perceiving there's some chemical reaction around it. Why does this happen? Nobody knows. It's a brilliantly constructed universe where there's some different energy at play. But it's just very very humbling to know that the world we are living in is a mix of these beautiful sensations. He basically says that there is light in darkness, there is sound in silence and also there is a lot of dazzle in just mundanity. So after reading this book, I thought about how humbling it is to know that we are just experiencing a slight slice of reality. We cannot make sense of everything because humans in general are very dominant in terms of their eyesight we always believe what we see but there are a million things around us which are being experienced right now even around me there might be different radiations different sources of energy which I, which I can't perceive but animals can so this book is all about animals you would start loving animals in a very different way you would start appreciating that okay humans have a certain way of doing things but animals also have a certain way how do animals communicate it's very very fascinating he has talked about many such animals he has given out beautiful pictures of seals there are butterflies there are sand scorpions there are nephile spiders orb web there is the philippine tasia there is the blue whale the asian elephant the blue throated hummingbird how do these animals communicate within themselves it's just mind blowing i think this is one of the best books to read in terms of science if you have never read a book in this space this book would be a great starting point ed young the writer is also a pulitzer prize winning writer his previous book had won a pulitzer prize for his writing he had talked about microbes and genes this book is being very popular right now and i wanted to be here to share this book with all of you because it's a very very important read it won't feel like you are reading uh, something very heavy it's a very tightly written story the narrative of the writer is very very on point it does not feel preachy at all he writes it in a very story format and it's very quirky he tries to blend in some humor as well so that way this book seems to be a great great read and it just basically expands your horizon of thinking of how you perceive reality it's a very humbling experience towards the end the writer has talked about how important it is to be sympathetic towards animals towards environment by reading these books is what i feel humans can change their way of thinking of how they feel they are the most dominant life forms just because animals can't talk doesn't mean that they have no right to have a dominant dominance in the hierarchy there's a lot of debate around this he has talked a lot about that as well and in general it's a very humbling experience he says that every experience that we feel is basically a filtered version of the universe like the universe is much 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 more than we can ever comprehend so yeah i wanted to share this book with all of you guys if you ever get a chance to read this book don't miss this book i rarely recommend non-fiction books with this passion with this excitement but this book i feel is is a must read for everyone it's it's for everyone not for any specific kind of people it's for everyone uh and yeah that i wanted to make this video and share this book with all of you guys i just finished reading this book it has been never this quick that i finished it and i want to film it right now uh with you guys so yeah that was the book and let me know in the comment section if you guys have read this book and thank you so much for watching the video till here more such interesting videos are lined up stay tuned that's all for this one see you in the next video bye bye